Tonight, more Uber sneakiness. Obama says your information is safe, sort of. And why one company wants you to think inside the box. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 260 for Friday, January 23rd, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. Invest in yourself for 2015. lynda.com has thousands of courses to help you learn new tech, business, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed today in Uber News. BuzzFeed reports that the company is suspending drivers who have registered their cars as commercial vehicles. This comes only weeks after the Department of Motor Vehicles in California issued a public clarification on their website saying that even occasional use of a vehicle commercially requires the vehicle to be registered commercially. A spokesperson from the DMV emphasized that this is not a new law to target Uber. It's only a clarification of a law that's been on the books since 1935. And at the same time, Uber is insisting their drivers don't register their cars as commercial vehicles in California. Over in India, Uber is in business again. And according to Engadget, the company was reinstated by applying for a taxi service license. So they're a taxi service with a bunch of people driving their non-commercial vehicles. I get it. Uber has been out of business in India for only a month after the alleged rape of a passenger by an Uber driver. Apple will allow China's State Internet Information Office to conduct random security audits on Apple products sold in China. The Chinese government demanded such access to verify that iPhones and other Apple products aren't being used by foreign governments for surveillance. Apple CEO Tim Cook told a Chinese publication that the company is not providing backdoor access to users' personal data. In other Apple news, Google's Project Zero security team unmasked three severe and unfixed vulnerabilities in Apple's OS X operating system. All three require physical access to a target Mac. Google reported the flaws in Apple in, to Apple in October, but because they haven't been fixed within Google's 90-day Project Zero time limit, they have now been made public. Earlier this week, we reported that Google has been, been doing the same thing to Microsoft, but I guess they decided to pick on someone else since, have you heard, Microsoft is cool again. Holograms. Here's an update on a story we've reported this week about healthcare.gov releasing our personal information to third parties. Today, the Obama administration announced that the site would no longer release information about applicants' age, income, zip code, tobacco use, and pregnancy results. Cooper Quinton, a staffer with the Electronic Frontier Foundation, called it a great first step, but said the administration needs to do more. The administration is aiming to have more than 9 million people signed up at healthcare.gov by February 15th. It felt a little like 1999 today as all eyes were glued to the IPO of a company called Box. By the time the stock market closed, Box was up 66% from its initial public offering price of $14. But this isn't 1999, and we've learned a little since the sock puppet days. Box is a cloud storage company with a lucrative-looking business plan. Jordan Novit has an article on VentureBeat called What Box's IPO Means for the Company and Its Competitors. Thanks for joining us today, Jordan. Thanks for having me, Megan. So talk about Box. What do they do? They will store the pictures and PDF files and Word documents that you want to uh, share with your colleagues or people outside of your company. And I see box files coming into my inbox all the time. Dropbox files also come into my inbox, to be fair. But Box is focused more on business customers, at least has talked more about doing that. And now they're public. <laughs> so you mentioned Dropbox, which is similarly named. Um, I know you just made a Twitter joke that Box is like Dropbox without the drop. Right. Uh, so Box, it sounds like, is more aimed at the enterprise market. That's what some people generally accept. Uh, if Dropbox hears me saying that, they're going to complain and they're going to say they have Dropbox for business and there are... I'm sure plenty of big companies that are paying Dropbox every month, but Box has kind of focused more uh, 
for a longer period of time in the past on business customers. And well, they're public first. <laughs> right. So Dropbox has been, mm. it's going to be public this year. That was the rumor, right? But they didn't, is, was it a mistake not to get there first? Do you think? Was it a mistake on, on the part of Dropbox? Maybe? Yes. Uh, well, I, I ha don't know what Dropbox's finances look like. I suspect that Dropbox is taking longer to improve their finances, just like Box held off on going public last year when the market tanked a little bit last year and kind of took a second or a few quarters, I should say, to be exact, uh, to bring in more revenue and, as far as I understand, shed a few of its employees to cut the costs every quarter. And basically, things look a little bit better uh, on the bottom line now than they did like a year ago for Box. And so it looks like a good idea that they did. They certainly got a nice little pop today, as, as you mentioned, 66% uh, 60, 60 up over the pricing. And I think the stock went up 14% today since it appeared this morning. So nice little appearance, debut, big day, whatever you want to say. And I'm sure the Dropbox is looking forward to its big day. So was this a surprise to anyone or was this what people were expecting from Box? People were expecting a little, a little pop. People were expecting that Box would underestimate or I should say price lower so that it could have this sort of outcome today. Mm -hmm. It's not entirely surprising. We knew eventually Box would go public. Right. So I think I read this on The Verge. I can't remember. They called Box or the, today's event kind of the canary in the coal mine. Uh, so what does this mean? What does this great IPO mean for other cloud storage or other companies like Box? Yeah. Everyone who competes with Box, who I talked to in, in this past week, had to say, oh, we are so hoping that Box has a great IPO today because that means the market the idea of storing files on internet instead of behind corporate data center, in, inside of corporate data centers. And if things didn't go well, that would mean there wasn't as much uh, interest or potential in that market. So it's, it's a positive outcome for those sorts of companies. Everyone is, is rooting even, even though Box is a competitor. Right. So Aaron uh, Levy, he's uh, he's the CEO and he's considered to be a genius. He rang the opening bell at the stock exchange this morning. A genius? Really? Who <laughs> called him that? Well, there were congratulatory tweets from Tim Cook, Apple CEO, huh? and Microsoft CEO, yeah. Satya Nadella. Um, what, what, so not a genius. What, what do they think of him? Are, are they frightened of him? I don't think they're frightened of him. There, there was questions about whether a company would buy Box. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, has proven to be, you know, it didn't happen. And so I, I think if anything, there's admiration for his his youthful uh, excitement and his uh, lack of fear for big companies. He's always been sort of very energetic uh, and a little feisty by wearing sneakers. Right. And didn't he, cool. didn't he say Microsoft was obsolete or something? He, he made some comment. Yeah, he constantly didn't... makes fun of them. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I think it, it's nice of Satya to be a sort of uh, beneficent, am I thinking of the right term? Beneficent dictator. Mm -hmm. Uh, being, you know, a, a leader of such a powerful company, say, yeah, we're, we're proud of him, good for him for doing that. I think there is certainly competition going on uh, with Microsoft and Box. And there, there was probably a, a question of whether Box would like to, uh, I'm sorry, Microsoft would like to buy, uh, if Microsoft would like to buy Box. Mm -hmm. And I think w what has happened is, Satya has allowed Box to continue to grow and, and flourish and, it, like I said, improve its finances and become a legitimate public company just like Microsoft once did so many years ago. Right. So now the way it works is, I mean, it's all we all need to have documents in the cloud. But what about businesses that want to keep some documents not on mm -hmm. the cloud? They want to keep them in-house. Would, would right. Box allow you to do that? Well, Box will say if you want to do that, go ahead and do it. But the only way that Box derives revenue is when people store files in servers that Box maintains. And so, conceivably, 
have stuff in your own corporate data center, like the tweet.tv data center, and also use Box to store PDFs of, of great scripts that you might have. But <laughs> there are companies that are providing the ability to store files in your own data center and in, in their cloud and access them, control them, analyze the use of them from one single interface. And e EMC is one company that does that. EMC is a public company. And Ignite is a, is a startup, and they're coming up and, and getting more customers. And they, they offer that hybrid sort of functionality. But people use Box. People are using Dropbox. And I think it, it will take time to show the validity of that uh, on a financial basis. Box is still trying to improve it, its finances. Um, at the same time, you're going to see companies like Ignite that, that have this hybrid model to continue to develop themselves. And I guess their finances are going to get better as well. Well, thank you so much, Jordan. That was Jordan Novet. He's a writer at VentureBeat. What's your next story that you're working on? Oh, I can't tell you that. Okay. Well, we Thanks look forward to yeah. hearing it. <laughs> Thanks That's for true. joining us. Yep. Now, coming up, Pinterest needs more testosterone, Bitcoin's image problem, and the sad and untimely demise of the world's best place to waste your money. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Lynda.com is used by millions of people around the world and has over 4,500 courses on topics like web development, photography, visual design, and business, as well as software training like Excel, WordPress, and Photoshop. What's your plan for 2015? Are you looking to get started in photography or improve the photos you take? I recommend lynda.com courses like Photoshop CC Essentials Training, iPhone and iPad Photography with iOS 8, and Pixel Playground with Burt Monroy. Whether you have 15 minutes or 15 hours, each course is structured so you can learn at your own pace from start to finish. All lynda.com courses are taught by experts who are accomplished professionals at the top of their field. Do something good for yourself in 2015 and sign up for a free 10-day trial to lynda.com by visiting lynda.com slash TN2. You'll get unlimited access to every course on lynda.com, including access on your iOS and Android devices, plus new courses as they're added each week. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2 to try it free for 10 days. Go ahead. I challenge you to learn something new in 2015. And now on to a few more stories we're following today. Two days after providing details about the upcoming Windows 10 operating system, Microsoft has released its technical preview build to beta testers. The new version includes Cortana integration, the new start menu, the Continuum tablet interface, and the new Xbox app. The new build also has the upgraded Action Center, new Photos app, and other updated apps. The version does not, however, include Xbox One streaming or the new Spartan browser, which these are expected in future beta versions. Pinterest wants you if you're a man. Right now, over 70% of Pinterest users are female, and according to Pew Research, 42% of all U.S. women online have a Pinterest account compared to only 13% men. 13% of men. Pinterest wants to grow with men for obvious reasons. Why alienate half of your potential user base? Other social media are relatively even between the sexes. One way that Pinterest will keep guys on the side is to filter out the lady stuff and make search results different <laughs> based on gender. For example, a man searching for workouts might see pins from Men's Fitness magazine and men and the men and the women would see women's health. Pinterest is also working to make some pins gender neutral, meaning a search for cooking could show more pizza and tacos next to baked goods because women also like pizza and tacos. Bitcoin has an image problem from its wildly fluctuating price to its association with drugs, murder, and money laundering to high-profile investors like Warren Buffett recommending that you steer clear of it. I think it's fair to say that Bitcoin is looking a little dull these days. Well, enter the bright and shiny Winklevoss twins. Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss want to give Bitcoin the legitimacy they think it deserves. Today, they announced Gemini, a next-generation Bitcoin exchange, and they're hoping their regulated Bitcoin exchange for American customers will become the NASDAQ of Bitcoin. Now, Gemini is the astrological sign for twins, and the Winklevoss twins are perhaps most famous for their legal battle with, that they pursued against Facebook's CEO, Mark Zuckerberg. 
If, like me, you feel you know these twins by the creepy way they were portrayed by Arnie Hammer in the movie The Social Network, you might think that Bitcoin could get better spokespeople. Maybe the Olsen twins, or perhaps the Weasley twins from Harry Potter. If you want early access to Gemini, you can sign up at their site at Gemini.com. And we end on a bit of a downer tonight. The parent company behind Sky Mall magazines filed for bankruptcy yesterday in Phoenix, and they blame electronic devices and in-flight Wi-Fi. Apparently, people would rather play on tablets, smartphones, laptops, or watch movies instead of browsing through a Sky Mail looking for ridiculous things like a night's toilet paper holder or the push pushy dog raincoat, which is my favorite, the life-size Bigfoot garden statues, or $8,500 massage chair. The company also cited competition from Amazon and eBay, plus airlines have been less willing to buy Sky Malls to put in the seat backs. The company hopes to liquidate its assets by the end, assets by the end of March. At least for now, you can still search for odd things on their website, which I spent an inordinate amount of time doing today. And one final note, the Gizwiz will be having a funeral for the Sky Mall on their episode this week. So download that if you care. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our news program in the morning, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.